Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Please get to the point. We're back in the post-apocalypse for Desert Warrior. So everyone, glue bits to your bike, start a cage fighting club, and shout every other line. Yes! Everything is more post-apocalyptic when you shout. You stupid fool! No, I can't stand it anymore! Oh, we start as one group of rat hunters is taken out by another group of rat hunters who are in turn taken out. Give yourself up. You won't die. This last group is led by Lou Ferrigno, so we'll assume they're the good guys. Get the fuck in! Although there's little sign of it. Nice shoulders. If you've seen any 80s post-apocalyptic movie, then the plot is not going to hold many surprises. I have heard the story a thousand times. Nuclear war has left everyone with radiation sickness. Babies are even born with it. Even the children are dying! Oh, in a world of shouting, this guy stands alone. Are we a dead end? It's Lou's job to find clean women for his boss, Bactal. He's not very good at it, but fate is about to make his job easier because elsewhere in the desert, the drones in their karate pyjamas have avoided the radiation sickness by staying in their underground city. I'm gonna be free! Free like the wind! Talk about your first world problems. And that attitude gets her boyfriend killed. <laughs> and Rosella herself captured by desert ninjas. <laughs> the news of a clean woman soon reaches Lou, the desert pimp, and in the ensuing fight, everyone else is killed. Bit of film technique for you here. There are four stages of an 80s hero getting shot. Look out! Badly hurt. Retribution. Basically dead. And suddenly better. Meanwhile, Rosella's dad wants to leave Drone City to search for her. But... That's against established laws. Drones aren't allowed into the desert, so... You can go beyond our boundaries, provided you never return. Elsewhere in the city, a scientist has discovered the cure to radiation sickness. My formula always works. With the help of the Tomy Omnibot 2000. But he's breached another of the city's laws and has to answer to someone who is definitely on the radio and not standing just off camera. We are meeting some resistance from Dr. Cleo. Stay put, I'm coming over. And it's the doctor's turn to face the council. It was brought to our attention that you have violated the new energy conservation rule. What sort of science fiction film stops the action for scenes of tedious bureaucracy? Will you defer your motion to allow a commission to explore the validity of your accusations? Despite Lou's injuries and the fact that Rosella lives in the opposite direction, the pair strike out into the desert. Until... Get up! You've got to get up! How are you going to make me your boss's sex slave now? Why the hell is she still going that way? Rosella is taken back to Bactals. Are you gonna be all right? Hang on, when did they pick Lou up? This movie skips over some plot points, but it keeps the important stuff. Take off her clothes. Wouldn't want to miss that. We'll assume that radiation welts only occur above the waist. Fortunately, her outfit is self-repairing. Lou visits Rosella. What do you want? Go away. Is this why you brought me here? It never occurred to me before that kidnapping women for my boss to sleep with might not be cool. How the hell did they get in? He saved my life. Glossing over some details there. Black, come with us. Go! Do what I say! Lou buys time for the rescue party to escape. Ah, 
change gear. But Rosella won't leave Lou to his fate. The guards in this place are useless. Or just non-existent. I do not feel this romance has been earned. And let's not forget, Rosella's boyfriend died because of her two days ago. Does everyone just wander into this place? Whoa, how did I miss that? Earlier, Lou and Rosella spent days wandering the desert. Her father and his friends spent ages hunting for her, despite having a vehicle. Now, they walk from Bactals to Drone City in one night. Internal security, this is Rosella. And are immediately arrested because of the deal her father made. I didn't know! That's a fair point, which she immediately undermines by leaning into her privilege. You cannot do this to me! I'm the daughter of Cortez! My daddy could buy and sell you. No! Boy, it's hard to root for anyone in this film. Now the doctor has good news. The radiation sickness can be cured, so there's no reason to hide underground, kidnap women, or fight anymore. Attack! Could someone tell Bactal? Or just shoot the doctor for absolutely no reason. Hope he wrote that formula down. What seems to be the trouble here? For most of the movie, this guy has been a largely administrative figure. Now, suddenly, he's promoted to action bad guy. A position he is not qualified to fill. <laughs> With a name like that, you could be a stormtrooper. Outside, a battle rages. Once again, totally unnecessary if someone would just speak to Bactal. Who is currently trying to blow up the girl he came here for. Where's Lou? Where'd everybody go? Finally, with massive casualties on both sides. There is hope now, Bactal. That was easy. So, for those of you rooting for the pimp and the spoilt little princess to get together, here's your happy ending as they walk off into the sunset. Careful not to trip over the corpses of their friends littering the desert. Thanks for watching. For more post apocalyptic movie reviews, click here. From the white clad drones to Lou's leather skirt, Clothes of the future are always speculative. What are your favourite futuristic fashions of the movies? Let us know in the comments below. I hope you'll never bother me again. Now, goodbye.